To call the 2020 season disappointing for the RGV FC Toros would be a bit of an understatement from a positive COVID test to a truncated schedule and still being winless on the year. And I'll say it, almost no help from their parent Houston Dynamo. It's been tough to see the Valley's pro soccer team continue to struggle. The Toros, their first season was really good. They had a winning season. They got to the playoffs. But since then, we've had three losing seasons, no playoff trips. Do you feel like this team can be better this coming season? I said, you know, be very careful what you wish for. And I've said it before to RGV fans. I said, be very careful what you wish for when it comes to independence. The Toros say they aren't hanging in the towel just yet. Their return to the playoffs is just a dream now. The water is reaching our necks with the Toros. The window of opportunity to even think about making it to the next level i don't know i don't i just don't see improvements and where and the places that need to be improved oh yeah they were calling this season toros 2.0 and it's the second go round for wilmer cabrera as the head coach the primary kits they're now blue gone as the orange and the black and the dynamo affiliation really just for player loans now the toros now are officially the valleys team after now five seasons now in their sixth year and while the changes have been nice they still need to do something they haven't done a lot of in recent years and that's win Happy Independence Day, Toros Nation. My name is Edson Ochoa, and I am the co-host of the Down on the Valley podcast. I hope you're currently bundling up uh, in your home uh, with a cup of hot cocoa, you know, uh, snuggled underneath uh, your favorite blanket as you're watching uh, this video, uh, getting to know more about RGVFC related uh, news. Uh, because, yeah, this Arctic blast that's uh, coming in, yeah, it's definitely, definitely uh, serious business right now. But anyway, today is a day of jubilation as we celebrate that two years ago, RGVFC announced that negotiations with Houston Dynamo FC for a restructured partnership had been successful. We will be taking a look at the consequences of said independence later in this video. But first, let's recap some of the latest RGVFC news. If you recall in the last video, I poked fun at the Tauros' tendency to remain silent uh, during the month of December on uh, signing announcements, uh, roster decisions, etc, etc, etc. However, this year, RGBFC decided to surprise the fans and implement the 12 Days of Toros, officially announcing the return of multiple players for the 2023 season. The first player announced by the club was center back Wahabakwe, followed by Christian Pinson, Jonathan Ricketts, Ricky Reese, Frank Nadarse, Tyler Derrick, Frank Lopez, Jose Gringo Torres, Eric Pimentel, and Juan David Cabezas. One of my biggest gripes in previous seasons was the lack of continuity in the Toros roster from year to year. If you recall when we were under the Houston Dynamo, it was pretty normal for 80% of the roster from the previous season to be completely lost and not resigned or move on to other different teams. So we'd pretty much start from scratch year after year, you know? Uh, but now with uh, these kind of movements that, that we're starting to see, you know, the fact that not only are we keeping some of our best performing pieces on our roster, but we're also keeping some of these experienced players. I think it's a really huge improvement from the Dynamo years. And I believe this should make a lot of Toros fans lose some of that uncertainty that was pretty commonplace in previous years as they looked on into the next season. Now, it's just a matter of complementing this solid foundation with competitive signings, whether players that would be coming off the bench or super subs, as a lot of people call them, uh, or uh, other starters to make this team competitive again in the USL Championship. The rest of the teams in the league are reinforcing their squads for the new season, and RGVFC cannot afford to stay stagnant in this ever-evolving league. 
And speaking of the USL Championship, this past Wednesday, the league announced the conference alignments for 2023, as well as the league format for the upcoming season. Outside of the disappearance of LA Galaxy 2, which will be moving on to MLS Next Pro, the Western Conference will remain unchanged. RGVFC will share the conference with Colorado Springs, El Paso Locomotive, Las Vegas Lights, Monterey Bay FC Union, Oakland Roots, Orange County SC, Phoenix Rising, Sacramento Republic, San Antonio FC, and San Diego Loyal. The Eastern Conference will be made up of Birmingham Legion, Charleston Battery, Detroit City FC, Hartford Athletic, Indy 11, Loudoun United, Louisville City, Memphis 901, the Miami FC, Pittsburgh Riverhounds, Tampa Bay Rowdies, and FC Tulsa. After multiple years of having imbalanced conferences, USL fans celebrated with joy upon reading the official release uh, on social media. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. As mentioned before, the league also announced the 2023 season structure. According to the USL Championships press release, a 34-game regular season will be played from March 11th to October 14th, 2023. The home openers and full schedule of, for the 2023 USL Championship season will be announced in January 2023. In a balanced schedule format, every team will play each of its conference foes twice, once at home, once away. The remaining 12 games of the season will be played against teams from the opposing conference with six games at home and six away. This will result in every team in the league squaring off for the first time since the USL Championship instituted a two-conference format back in 2015. At the conclusion of the regular season, the top eight teams in each conference will qualify for the 2023 USL Championship playoffs. The USL Championship playoffs will remain a single elimination format and will return to a fixed bracket format, culminating in the 2023 USL Championship final on a to-be-determined date between November 9th and November 13th, 2023. On social media, fans mostly agreed that the balanced schedule plus the disappearance of MLS2 teams was a very welcome change but they were also quick to voice their displeasure about the playoff format, arguing that by only eliminating one third of the teams after 34 games is too generous of a move by the league and renders the regular season almost meaningless. I personally would have gone with at most six playoff spots per conference, but as a Toros fan, I can't complain about having a 67% chance of probability to make it to the playoffs. But I do have to say though, going back with uh, the disappearance of LA Galaxy 2, it's all fun and games to say goodbye to Los Dos until you remember that Los Dos leaves the USL undefeated against the Toros throughout all of our GVSC's history. Let that sink in. As I did mention before, Today is the second anniversary of the independence from the Houston Dynamo. And honestly, looking back, I'm really glad that RGVFC, uh, especially Ron Patel, listened to their hardcore fans and made the decision to sever relationships with the Houston Dynamo. Uh, speaking from personal experience, I felt like the relationship between the two clubs, not just the front offices, but also fans themselves, had gone extremely, extremely toxic, and there was no point to try to rescue anything between them. You know, um, despite the comments made by some uh, Dynamo fans of, be careful what you wish for, yes, I'm looking at you, Sean Ringrose. Overall, RGBFC has had a positive turnaround. The team has qualified for the USL Championship playoffs for two straight seasons under Wilmer Cabrera. The roster is finally starting to see some glimpses of a long-term plan with multi-year deals, the signing of experienced players like Rodrigo Lopez, Vicente Sanchez, Tyler Derrick, Eric Pimentel, and Juan David Cabezas. 
among others. And best of all, these improvements that we've seen that I've mentioned before have had a positive effect in fan attendance, improving the club's numbers from pre-COVID levels in 2019. Are there other aspects that need to be improved? Of course, as always. Marketing needs to continue to make some improvements. I mean, it is still common for people here in the Rio Grande Valley to have no idea that the club even exists in the first place. Uh, adding to that, I think social media needs to improve on their interactivity with fans, have a bigger social media presence. Uh, and I feel like that'll help in getting fans from outside the Rio Grande Valley. You know, I've mentioned before, um, back with uh, the previous uh, social media manager of uh, Forward Madison, uh, they the way they interacted with fans, uh, not just when, in Madison, Wisconsin, but throughout the whole United States, you know, it brought a lot of fans, you know, to, to, to the club that would at least pay attention or to their games or even buy some merch because of that interact, interactivity. And I feel like RGBFC kind of needs that, needs that again. Unfortunately though, uh, I mean, all of these six improvements come at a cost for ownership. At the end of the day, the question boils down to how much money is ownership willing to invest in this team while at the same time not getting any returns in profit? In fact, they might even be losing money in the process. But despite on how gloomy I just sounded with what I just said. I definitely prefer being able to control my own destiny than having to deal with watching my team being controlled by a general manager that couldn't even build a competitive MLS team, much less he was gonna build a competitive USL team for a market that he's not even pretty much in charge of. Yes, I'm looking at you, Matt Jordan, uh, AKA Core Values. Before I go, I did want to end this video uh, with a little activity that uh, I mentioned to a couple of Toros fans. Um, I wanted to do something, you know, in the spirit of Christmas, uh, basically a letter to Santa on what they wanted to see from the Toros in 2023. I reached out to a couple of fans, obviously to our co-host Jacob and as well as Ray Silva of South Texas Border Sports. And I wanted to read some of the some of the letters that um, they they sent over to me. So the first one is going to be obviously from um, my co-host Jacob Young. And he says, Dear Santa, all I really want for Christmas is for RGBFC to have a winning season and be a contender for home field advantage in the playoffs. Thanks. Sincerely, Jacob Young. Short, sweet, and to the point. And I really like what he's telling uh, Santa. Let's hope it actually does happen. This one is actually not a letter to Santa per se. Uh, it seems to be more of a letter to the team and to the fans. This one's coming from uh, Ray Silva of South Texas Border Sports. And I want to take my time to uh, read it out to you. So it says, Dear RGVFC Toros, Thank you for a memorable 2022 season. It was a very memorable uh, year from your Open Cup debut to the playoff run. All was fun, but for Christmas, my wish is to keep building everything that was done last season and continue the growth. To the fans, pretty soon you're going to deal with other tenants. So be nice. After all, of, after all, this is the season of joy and happiness because let's face it, there's plenty of dislikes. And last time I checked, Valley people are very warm and welcoming. But keep making HEB Park a fortress where USL Championship playoff contenders' aspirations come to an end. Thank you, RGVFC fans and FO, and happy holidays. Thank you so much for sending us uh, this letter, uh, Ray. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, someone else that I reached out to uh, is a fan of the, uh, a fan of the show. Uh, I follow him on, on social media. Um, he ha actually has a YouTube channel called uh, Blue Club Sports. If you guys want to go ahead and, and uh, subscribe to his channel. Uh, he's here from the Valley. He does go to RGBSC games. And he, he sends me uh, this letter. He says, Dear Santa, besides the obvious one being that we need to make the playoffs again next year, 
I'd say the biggest thing I want to see from the Toros is that the front office is aggressive to bring in people to the stadium like they were towards the end of the season. The last home game of the season, I sensed a real atmosphere that I had not seen all year. If we really want to compete with SAFC, then we need more fans in the stands. I definitely agree. And it's one of the things that I that I kind of mentioned, one of the, the improvements that they could do uh, for, for 2023. And uh, we've also got uh, Jesus Peña. And he says, Dear Santa, all I want for Christmas for RGBFC in 2023 is the following. Sign Oli Wright. An increase in attendance. Continued social media engagement to learn more about the personal side of each player. Continued usage of FIBO to snack great deals on tickets. Your loyal fan, Jesus T. Peña. Thank you, Jesus, for uh, reaching out and sending us uh, that letter. Really, really appreciate. Uh, yeah, I really would like to see Ollie Wright uh, get another opportunity. Unfortunately, you know, with his preseason injury, he really didn't have a lot of uh, opportunity to kind of showcase his talents. I, uh, I really hope that he do, does get uh, an extension so he can at least get a full year to show to show us what he's got. Um, like I said, for me personally, I think the biggest improvements is number one, I would like to see a veteran, or not veteran per se, but an experienced striker I mean, we've got experience in the goal and uh, the goalkeeper position. We've got experience in defense. We've got experience in the midfield. But I feel like we're missing experience out on the attack. Pinzoni is a great player, but I do feel like we need some of that experience like we used to have with Vicente Sanchez uh, to kind of lead the team when things aren't going right. We saw that in 2021 in that playoff game against Phoenix Rising how much influence Vicente Sanchez had in help this team get back and end up snagging the, the victory, you know, in penalties. And I think we kind of missed that against Colorado Springs switchback. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing that, that I would like to see. Um, otherwise, you know, as mentioned before, bigger social media presence, uh, as well as, you know, the uh, ability to you know, have more, know more about, about the, the players themselves. But I think one more thing I do want to add is the ability to have Spanish broadcasts of the games. We now have talked about this in previous years. RGV, the RGV is a very Hispanic based community. Uh, a lot of the, the people here are fluent Spanish speakers. I dare to say uh, uh, some of them uh, only speak Spanish. And I feel like, you know, having more of a Spanish presence can help bring, you know, these these fans closer to, to the club, make it part of that. I mean, it's the identity. It's the culture of the Rio Grande Valley. And I think we need to embrace it despite, you know, some people saying, well, we live in the United States. But I think this is our culture. This is our identity. And I think we need to embrace it. Uh, I know I know back in 2020 there was you know there was something in the works unfortunately it didn't pan out but hopefully in the next couple of years we can see some more Spanish presence from the Toros. Um, but anyway that's all I have for today. Share your thoughts with me uh, in the comments down below. Are you happy with Wilmer Cabrera's roster decisions uh, that have been announced in the last couple of days? Do you believe that we're missing another player from last season's roster that, should, that you would like to see return back in 2023? Do you agree with USL Twitter about the number of playoff spots that are available? You know, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching and supporting the Down of the Valley podcast. If you really enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. You know, click on that little bell icon down below and you will receive a notification every time we go live or every time we upload a video uh, to the Down in the Valley uh, podcast uh, channel. And with that, you won't be able, you won't be missing any RGVSC related news and discussions. I wish you all happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And be sure to bundle up and stay warm in this Arctic freeze. 
and let's enjoy the moments, ladies and gentlemen. Be safe.